In this video, I wanted to talk about Git and GitHub. So I'm going to primarily explain all the commands you can use with Git. I'm going to explain the difference between Git, GitHub, and other tools like uh, Bitbucket, uh, GitLab, and so on. Uh, I'm going to try to condense this into 10 minutes so that basically after watching this video, you should have the basic knowledge required to start using Git in your projects, um, either professionally or if you're just playing with it. So let's get started. So first, let's get out of the way. What is the difference between GitHub and Git? So GitHub is a website for hosting projects that use Git. So Bitbucket, GitLab, and any of those other websites are basically websites that are hosting your projects. So they have some, um, some solutions, some tools behind it for basically uh, just hosting and uh, managing your code. So you're creating a repository for your code. Uh, while Git is a type of version control system or VCS, uh, that actually helps you track, commit and manage those files that you want to store in a repository. Uh, it allows multiple, multiple people to work on the same files, to see changes and to basically track what's happening. So there are basically two ways how you can start uh, with a project. First of all, you can use git init to initialize a git project or you can clone a project from the web. So basically what you could do is find a project somewhere on uh, GitHub or anywhere and just type in git clone and the URL of that project. But in this case, we're going to start our own project and use git init. Um, and it's going to say initialized empty git repository. You also have to install Git, but I'm not going to go into that since this shouldn't really be a problem. In this case, I'm using Git bash for Windows, so you can just type in install Git bash for Windows. Uh, if you are on uh, Mac or Ubuntu, you can either use Brew or um, the tools from Ubuntu. So it shouldn't really be a problem to set this up. The next step is creating an account with GitHub. In this case, I already have an account on GitHub and it should basically be the same procedure. Just go to GitHub, create an account and initialize an empty repository. It is even going to tell you here what you need to do to connect our local versions here with our uh, remote version here. So first of all, we have initialized an empty repository, then we can add files and then we can push this um, to our remote. So let's do this. Um, let's open our editor and create a new file and call it example.txt and write some text or basically anything. Now uh, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to add this file to our um, to Git. Uh, in order to add this file, you're going to type in get git add. And now we can specify the file that we want to add, our example.txt, or we can just type in dot. And dot is going to add all files. So if at one moment we add a new file and have like 10,000 files here, we can always uh, just type in git add dot and it's going to add all the files. So after that, we need to commit this. Uh, commit is going to be something like a um, description, a uh, comment to what you have actually added, what file, what changes you have added. So in this case, we are going to type in git commit um, something like um, initial commit. So it was our first commit. One file changed, one insertions. Uh, and here we can see uh, our text file that we have just added. Um, now we can type in git status in order to see um, if uh, if we have added all the files, so on branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. What we should also do is add our remote git branch. In order to do that, um, we need to add git remote origin. So let's copy this one here. So this is going to add an origin to, to our git project or local git project. And now we can type in git remote and we can see our origin, so our fetch and push. Uh, we can add multiple ones, so it is the it is a convention to call this origin, but we can um, call it basically anything and have multiple ones. So we could have multiple GitHub 
uh, projects here and be pushing these to different ones. So what we are going to do here is copy this here. By default, we are on the master branch, as you can see here. So we are not going to create the main branch. It's just going to be our master branch. And we're going to push our local changes to GitHub here. So in order to push it, we just type in git push. Uh, and now we specify our remote, which is going to be origin. So we could have called this something else and it would have worked the same. Um, since we are pushing the first time, we need to configure the branch here. So we'll just paste this here. And this should uh, push our master branch. Um, I need to put my login details here. And I have just pushed my local file here to our GitHub remote. If I refresh this, uh, we should get our code folder and our uh, example here. So uh, as simple as that and the code folder is in there because uh, when I started this, I'm not um, in my code folder, but I, I would have to go into code. So let's go back. Uh, this was pretty simple. So if you wanted to change something, let's say some text uh, one, right? This updated now. Uh, we could type in git status in order to see our status. And we can see that there are changes that are ready for commit. So our code is modified here. So what we are going to do now is add this so we can just type in git add dot and this is going to add our example.txt and now we can again tap git status and we will see that it is modified but we still haven't uh, pushed this one so uh, we still haven't committed and pushed this one so what we can do now is type in git commit and we are going to say uh, first change and now type in git status and you're going to see that um, your branch is ahead of origin master. So this means by our remote, uh, we are in front by one commit, but there is nothing to commit. Our working tree is clean. So as you can see, we could now push this and have our changes uh, on the remote. But as you have already noticed, we are always on our master branch. So Git works by having multiple branches and a very common standard in the industry is having a master branch and feature branches. So if you are developing a feature, for example, um, you want to add a new lockout button, uh, you could uh, create a new branch, do this in the new branch, um, and then create a pull request. A pull request is um, merging your feature branch with your master branch and basically someone looking after, over the code if something broke. Uh, so, uh, we can type in git branch and we can see that we are on our master branch. If you want to create a new branch, we could type in git um, feature one. And as you can see, we have switched to a new branch, which is called feature one. And if you change this, uh, just type in some text like feature, for example, and let's return back. We are going to have our git status, git add, git commit, added feature. And now uh, you can see that um, we are ready here, but we don't have the feature one branch yet in our remote. So because of that, it's not going, it's not telling us that we are ahead for one um, commit. So what we can do is push this now. Let's return to here. And we are going to push feature one. So basically I will have to log in again. And great, as you can see, uh, we have added a new uh, branch on our remote, feature one. So if we go back, and now, as you can see, uh, it's even going to tell us that our feature one uh, pushed something to our remote, and we're going to have our master and feature one branch. If we go into feature one and go example text, you're going to see the feature here. 
but if you go back to our master, we're going to see that the feature is not there. And it is also interesting uh, switching between branch. So if you type in git checkout, uh, if you don't type in this here, then it's not going to create a new branch. You type in the minus B in order to create a new branch. So if we just check out to our existing branch master, you can see that this text updates here. And if we do the same again here, you can see that the feature is here again. So this is a really nice version uh, to, to feature development. So that's one of the reasons that Git is so popular. There are a lot more um, commands that you can do. We are going to go over a few important ones. So I have already said that you can create pull requests, which are basically merging your feature branches or any other branches into any branch you want. But the uh, most common concept is merging into a master branch. Um, but you can also do this manually here. So um, what you could do is check out at our master branch and now type in git merge feature one. So as you can see, we have now merged our feature one into our master branch. And as you can see, we are in our master branch, but we have this feature here. Um, so as you can imagine, this can create all types of complications. So you really need to be careful about this. What I recommend is, uh, I mean, what generally is recommended is always pulling the most up-to-date version of your master branch and only then merging your feature branches into the master branch. Um, you also should really look out who is working on which files. So if multiple people are working on the same file and then you want to merge this, this could become a hellhole pretty quickly. Um, so. We haven't gone uh, about how to pull uh, stuff. So let's say we someone else changed something on our repository and we, want, and we want to get those changes. So we would type in git pull. And now it's going to say already up to date because um, no one else did this, but normally it would pull the changes. And again, we would uh, could we could run into a same problem if uh, those people have edited a file that we are working on, we, could, we would have again a conflict here. Uh, what you can do is use force. Uh, this is not really recommended since, um, I mean, there are certain situations where it could be useful, but um, normally it is really not recommended to use force um, since um, you could remove changes or add changes to the project that uh, no one was expecting to happen. Um, there are also logs which you, which you can see. So type in git log and here we can see our commits and we can see where our head is. So we can also change the location where our head is pointing to. So basically uh, we have this commit here. So and our head is pointing to the latest commit, which makes sense. But what we could do is point to a commit earlier, for example, here. And in order to do that, we can type in git reset f. Uh, no, we are already in that one. So c7. We don't have to type in all of them. So and we um, should be now on this one. If we type in git status. Um, we can see that um, the example, the text file was committed and that we are ahead uh, of that one by one commit. So, so basically those are all the basic commands that could fit into a 10 minute video. Um, there are a lot of other flags that you can use um, like slash a or uh, hyphen force and so on and so forth. Um, but those should be enough to get you started with Git. Uh, you can also use git help um, where you can see um, some other commands that are there. So uh, as you can reset, move, add, uh, remove files, um, you can see status. We have also kind of over log uh, grab. You can use grab to uh, create a pattern uh, and show certain lines. Um, we can use merge, fetch, pull, push. So basically those are all the commands that you can use with Git. I hope this video was helpful to you and you could start 
getting the grasps of Git. If you want a more complex video about this, um, tell me in the comments or maybe this is just enough for you to get started and you can find the other options on the way. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.